<laughs> Hello, everybody. How you guys doing? Hello. Sounds good. Um, could you pass the cereal down, please? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys don't mind. I'm just going to eat cereal on the panel. Enjoy. I can share. Do you need a plastic cup as well? Uh, sure. I don't know why there's Starbers there. I, I Is that for us? We're just going to eat it anyways. <laughs> I love Starbers. What does that say? Serve directions? Great. No, what is that? You really don't know about it. I swear, I don't know. I, okay. I know nothing. So this says, just in case you needed some cereal, and then in uh, italics it says, we know the joke behind the cereal. <laughs> <laughs> and also, the starburst, parentheses, stream joke. Uh, Enjoy from Kevin Photography. What? What is yeah, the awesome. Star dream joke? I know the cereal oh, joke. Really? Maybe we should tell them. Yeah. 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 That's so, so cute. In Sword Art, one of Kirito's moves is Starburst Stream. Well, there's this video online of Kirito screaming Starburst Stream and a guy literally throwing Starburst candy into a stream. <laughs> just like over and over. <laughs> now we can actually do that. Like on Christmas morning, we're like, we have presents? Yeah. <laughs> it's so fun. What's the cereal yeah. Thank you, Kevin the Photography, can I, can I, wherever you are. They're Fruit Loops. Uh, we're going to get Luffy on this panel. <laughs> we already are. <laughs> oh, that was a sort of. That was a. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm not going to say exactly what he said. It's not an 18 um, plus panel. But we, we did this thing called SAO Radio. Um, if you have the Blu-rays, um, it's like a bonus feature, and it's ridiculous. So the first one that we recorded... Should just be called SAO Voice Actors Unleashed, is really what it should be. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, SAO Voice Actors Gone Wild. <laughs> so the first episode was Share Me, Myself, and Ben Diskin, uh, who plays Death Gun. And he lost this game that we were playing, so he had to sell cereal in Death Gun's voice. And what he said. I know Ben Diskin. Is any opportunity to take things to an uncomfortable place? Yeah. Well, he does. So everything was pretty much PG until this. PSA commercials. Oh. Uh, I'll just say you have to listen because it's not an 18 plus panel. Yeah, I don't think you could get, I don't even think you could give the gist of it without, like. Uh, yeah. I'll give the no, gist. Let's, yeah, I'll, no, let's just let them do their homework. <laughs> <laughs> it was well, something about assignments. choking you with his. Oh. If you don't eat the cereal. So we have cereal. <laughs> Good morning. But also, during said panel, uh, during said uh, radio program that we were recording, we took a break because Hidaway, the first time we did it, Hidaway was like, let's do it again, and you guys don't think everything is so funny because we can't hear you, you're just laughing the whole time, you're not saying anything. Oh, this was the next one. So Bryce chose to eat cereal the entire time because he was like, they won't stop me. I didn't want Ben to show up and choke me with his... Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, so hands, that's what we're talking about? What? Hands? hands? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hands. yeah. Hands. Of course. Yeah. So, because he is Death Gun. So Bryce was like eating cereal, so the whole time you just hear random crunching throughout the entire <laughs> thing. And it's radio, so you can't see us, so you're just like, what is what that is noise? It's like, this isn't distracting, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> the whole time. The whole time. If you don't stop, I'm gonna choke you right now. With your hands. hands. With hands. my hands. Are you choking? You, you choked yourself. <laughs> you know that to yourself, right? Don't choke. Rest in peace, Pappy. <laughs> 
Why did I picture it happening? <laughs> Um, should we should we talk about ourselves or should we take some questions? Maybe we should introduce ourselves. Yes. Tag, go ahead. Okay, cool. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys feeling? Yeah. Wait, what? How are you guys feeling? <laughs> okay, 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 cool, cool. Um, my name is Cassandra Lee Morris. I'm also a voice actor for lots of other things, but since this is a Sword Art panel, we'll just stick with the Leafa questions for now. Yeah, cool. And discussions. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, super honored to be here. These are amazing actors next to me. I uh, feel so honored to be able to work with them on the show and to do a group panel with them. This is the first time that we have done a group panel. Yeah. Just us. Yeah, just us. Yeah. We had one like massive group panel at Anime Expo, which you can probably find on YouTube. Yeah, that was like 15 of us. I know, that was insane. So it's awesome to be here with you guys and with you guys. So I'm gonna pass the mic. Pass the mic from the left hand side. Pass. Hi, everyone. Sacramento. I'm, my name is Michelle Ruff. And, uh, I play Sinan in Sword Art Online. Rukia. <laughs> and Rukia, yes. But we're not talking about Rukia right now, we're talking about Sinan. And um, I ditto everything that this lovely lady said as I sit. I call these two girls my sister wives from the Sword Art Online <laughs> entourage of, you know, and, and my, of this dude, right? Kirito, so. All ladies love Kirito. <laughs> <laughs> hence, hence the sister wives, and we do have a, we have a picture of us at Anime Expo we do. against the wall. But there's like all the sister wives. That was, so that was fun. You can find that on Twitter somewhere. I think. A hundred yeah. people or somewhere. I don't <laughs> the know. The harem of sister wives. <laughs> anyway, looking forward to uh, answering questions and getting to chat with all of you and autograph sessions and blah 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 blah. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Jeremy Lee. Uh, good morning. You guys are so awake this morning. It's awesome. I have coffee. I do too, and a smoothie. But this is supposed to be relaxing, and this is coffee, so it's not. So I don't know what's happening. Um, so I need balance. Uh, I am very excited. I love working on the show, uh, and I love getting to hang out with these people. This, I think, sort of. I think it's like this with a couple of shows, but Sword Art in particular, we really feel like one giant family, so anytime we get to hang out together, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, so you guys get to witness that uh, for the next hour. Uh, but thank you guys so much. Like, the fact that this panel is full says a lot about how amazing the support is for the show, which we never expected it to be like this, and it's been an amazing journey to see, like, when we premiered the show in Boston, now where it is and that we've got a, a movie premiering uh, in March and hopefully we'll get to dub it, but it's just insane. And that's, that's honestly because of you guys. They would not keep making it if you guys didn't love it. So thank you so much. And I am Bryce Pappenbrook. Yeah. And I voice Kirito. Female Kitty Toe. <laughs> Which I was so happy about. Because I've always wanted to be a magic Hello. girl. Hello. <laughs> uh, Chew louder! Are you doing the Starburst? No! No, we were trying to chew the cereal. Keep practicing. Keep practicing. Apparently, we don't have the cereal chewing skills that Bryce Happy Pappenbrook is known for. There's so. a technique to it. You fill your mouth up entirely oh, and chew as hard as possible. Rice, rice paper. Rice paper. Rice paper. So, uh. <laughs> See, there's techniques. 
doing? You're learning something. If you need to chew cereal on mic, force the cereal in your mouth. <laughs> For the next audition I go on for chewing something, I'm gonna book it. Don't choke! You're welcome, world. Now it's not even like chewing for dubbing purposes. This is just like prelay. Like, how would you do it for fitting the flaps of an anime? Well, you just you just have to chew with the flap. We're not ready. We're not ready. That's that's the next course. Serial chewing 201. That's tomorrow. So, should we take some questions? No, I think we should keep chewing into mics. That's a good idea. Let's just chew for the... Welcome to the SAO Chewing Panel. Okay. Seriously, I'm up for the challenge. I accept. This is why they don't put us together on panels. <laughs> Let's take questions. Go. Okay. Yeah, we need to take questions. We don't have to. I'm just kidding. I don't have to take any questions. No. If there's a line, we, I guess we should. Let's um, do it. All right. Go for it. Be, be loud so everyone behind you can hear you okay. as well. Okay. This, can, can we ask some non-SAO stuff? Oh, this is an SAO panel. SAO panel. But you can. You can. Yeah, but <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll break the rules. Okay. okay. For, this is for Bryce and Cassandra. First, oh, no. for, for Bryce, I, I'd like you to read this this pre-title screen quote from Tiz in character. Yeah. And okay. For, and for, then for Cassandra, for you to to read to read the one that he had. I'll, I'll give it to Bryce. So this is a bravely it? default question. May I do it with a full mouth? You want? <laughs> I didn't have a. Oh my God. Now I'm beginning to tease his voice with a full mouth of cereal. Oh Other players' characters can be called to assist you in the heat of battle. If you're an ally whose journey is already underway, you're summoned to enlist their aid. Elsewhere, other, others may be in need of your help. You're sent to offer them your best move. Summon friend data can also be traded to street pass. Go forth and mingle, warrior. And eat Fruit Loops! <laughs> Hold on, I'm, I'm prepping. You guys are witnessing like real acting technique right now? Yeah, I have to get into character first of all. I need complete silence. Let me know your allies may come up with you after some of us from. Huh? Let me your allies may come Okay, sure. Once they say, you'll be able to fall upon them with the game for assistance in the summer for average and one. How many of us have seen SAO abridged? Have you guys seen it? I haven't seen it, no. Oh. I haven't seen it. I 
I have it, but uh, we, I think we talked about it in uh, Virginia where we were like, we should do like a panel of us watching Sword Art Online coverage. Yeah. I, I would take that. I hear it's a little raunchy, so it's probably, it's gonna be a late night panel, but I watched the Attack on Titan bridge on a panel. Is it the same guy? Uh, I think it's a different group. Um, but it's, it's really good. So I, I'm looking forward to watching the SAO one. I hear Kirito is kind of a jerk. Uh, what? Yeah. 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 Nice. I feel like they would. Yeah, because it wanted to split the code. <laughs> it's like they, it's like that they channeled that part of like you and I, because we always like argue over numbers. Yeah, yeah. zeros and ones zeros all the time. And ones yeah. Hi. I did. Yes. So um, I know Dynasty Warriors Nine was announced for this year. So do you think, like, you make the English voice? Just are you hoping they'll bring you back for it? I mean, fingers crossed. I've been Wan Ping since I think it was Dynasty Warriors Two or Three. How um, old were you? Like five? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're so you're so advanced. <laughs> Class of how to like chew into a microphone. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Um, well, fingers crossed they bring me back because yeah, I, I think I've been Wan Ping for twenty so years. I, I heard. I heard. They, I heard they really wanted uh, your that character to eat cereal during the game. So Did I, they? I think that you've got a good shot at coming back this year. I think Wan Ping would eat a lot of cereal. I think. I think and so carry a giant sword. <laughs> that's him. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. You are good. So the question is, what would happen if the cast of SAO was thrown into the Attack on Titan world? So our characters or ourselves? Our character. Oh, our character. Now, okay, hold, hold on. Better. In a video game or outside of the video game? <laughs> outside of the game. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kirito would be smashed immediately. <laughs> He wouldn't even know that Titans were attacking because he would be playing whatever video games in that world would be and his ears would be covered with something. So he wouldn't even hear them coming. They'd be like, some creepy one would be like sneaking up behind him. Like, he wouldn't even notice them. And... Yeah, I'd probably be like lying in my bed, you know, with my Link Start thing on, not even knowing what the heck was going on, I'm guessing. <laughs> Yeah, gamers wouldn't fare very well. <laughs> I think maybe if it was the in-game characters, they'd do a little better. Because Kirito would just be cheating, and they couldn't hurt him at all. Uh, I just dropped something. Clearly I'm causing chaos on my side of the table, but it's fine. Look how neat our side is. Hold on. I have a pyramid like you're like four years old. We need like crayons and paint, like paint and... I'm expressing my creativity. <laughs> I literally looked at my pyramid for a half a second and it was all compiled in a circle and now it's dispersed. It's beautiful. Um, I think it's, it's art. It's a Fruit Loop watercolor. Yes, thank you for recognizing my efforts. It looks even better now. It's art. It's Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> look for my display next year in Artist Alley. Um, so, okay, Lipa outside of the game is Sugu, and she's actually a really talented kendo fighter, so I think that she might fare a little bit better than the others, just because she has, like, true mastery of her kendo stick. 
So I think that she would stick it out for a little while, and you know, maybe she would fall, but hey, at least she gave it her best effort. Nice. I think, I think Asana would be fine. I have a little girl crush on you right now. Legitimately, I think she would I be fine. I, I admit it. Asana has been kidnapped. Her boyfriend has tons of girls after him all the time. And I feel like the fact that he's still with her says that there's something unstoppable about her. And I think she'd be fine. I honestly think the Titans might kidnap her and make them her princess or make them their queen. And then I would be in control of all of the Titans. And I feel like that's what Attack on Titan season three should be. But wait, since I'm the president of, yes, you know, I'm, I'm the new elected president. Sinan, and she's my VP. Yeah. W could I be your president? Yeah, you're gonna be my okay. CFO. Okay, I am in. No. I heard a reference to it on Twitter, and then someone said it was delayed, but it is there. And I feel like if it's on Twitter, it yes. must be real. Yes. That's my rule of thumb. Everything on the internet is real. Right. Are all of our characters in season three? That's all I care about. <laughs> we want to know. She's like, no. We want to know if we still have a job. <laughs> so it looks like I'm gonna have to have a new career as a Fruit Loop Jackson Paul. Yeah, I think you. I thought that was stunning. your true calling. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's a gift. Really. I can't do that. Thank you. We're hoping for a season three. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. Season three. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Sina. Hi, Austin. Hi, Hi. 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 So wait, does it have to be, okay, you're gonna get me killed here. You see who I'm sitting next to? I'm just saying I can help you with them. Um, do I have to share my character with another character? needs a break for a little while. <laughs> He's kind of sworn off girls for a bit. <laughs> it's a red orange for me to throw at you. He just wants to date the dragon poop sword, okay? <laughs> He's working on leveling up, and he just wants to date his swords. He's <laughs> Stop Starburst streaming me. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Well, I would. I'm. Sinan is is not gay, and nor am I. Not that you know. I don't care about any of that stuff. But I would ship <laughs> Leafa right now because I have a girl crush on her with her Jackson Pollock Fruit Loop stuff and <laughs> the whole. I don't know. She she could protect me if we had to if we landed in Attack on Titan. <laughs> With her, what did you call it? Her kendo. Her kendo. Yeah. yeah. Actually, that would be cool. No, like for real, if Sinon and Lipa did get together, I feel like, okay, because Lipa is pretty strong. I like to say that, you know, she did teach Kirito a lot of what he knows in her arc. 
and Sinon is like a badass sniper. So to combine the two of them, we'd make a dang fine couple. <laughs> I like how you are really powerful. <laughs> I like that. Oh, and Leaf is not related to Sinon, so that would be great. <laughs> We're not first cousins or anything. Because uh, I, I really do like Austin and Kitty Toe together, but if I can't choose that, it's just all of her other relationships are real toxic. <laughs> you can join us. <laughs> I could, but you guys like have a thing, and I don't want to invite myself in and be the third wheel. Like that's uncomfortable. Uh, all of like, and Austin has a lot of female friends, which I guess are there for Kitty Toe, but really they're my friends as well. But I don't think they really like want to talk to her all the time. They like Does it have to be from Sword Art Online. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I tried. You, can choose, you can choose female PD yeah. <laughs> I could. Uh, but I won't. Uh, what about Klein? No. I'm thinking Akio at this point. Yeah. How about Yuki? Yuki? Oh. Uh... Yuki after the Mother's Rosario arc? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would definitely pick Yuki. I would. Yeah, that's a good save. Situation. Okay, so Kirito lied to his three sister wives about a meetup. This has happened before. <laughs> so we all. Um, so I don't understand. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm kind of late. I wasn't gaming. Something tells me you're not telling the truth. What I might that fish? Be? Ooh, fish for dinner maybe? <laughs> uh, Kitty Toe, aren't we? Uh, we're going out for dinner, right? That's what you said. We're uh, having fish. That was today. Yes. Oh, my calendar must be uh, messed up. Uh, let me fix it. 
<laughs> oh, your, your calendar's messed up on our anniversary? Oh, oh it's our, it, it is our anniversary, yeah. that's right. The anniversary of what? Uh, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing? 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 And war? Go. <laughs> <laughs> weekend for me is getting picked on. Uh, we've been shooting this web series called Confessionals. And the character I play is named Reese Babinflock. And Reese has been <laughs> Reese has been getting picked on by every character in the show. And then I come to the panel as Bryce Pappenbrook and get picked on by every person on the panel. <laughs> it's fantastic. You're I love an easy it. target this weekend. I know. Keep it coming. <laughs> Be careful what you ask. Oh, hello. I'm glad to see many people in the franchise that I play. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. So this is a safe time for most people, though. I have questions for this Michelle Ross and Mark and Cook. I'll save questions for you two later. Okay. 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 What would be for you? What's the one thing that your mother liked for us to know about you? Uh, he's asking what the one thing our mother would like you guys to know about us. All right, for Bryce and I. Bryce? He's loud. He's loud? Yes. <laughs> Prepare yourself, he's loud. Well, my mom's kind of a softie. She would probably say, my daughter is the nicest girl. <laughs> she has a big heart. She talks like that too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hello, how are you? Good. Sorry, I'm very nervous. Oh, don't be nervous. We're crazy. We're nuts. We're also on a sugar high now, so. Just gotta keep going down here. Oh, my I did not choose to be a voice actor. Voice acting chose me. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Seriously? Wait, how do you choose <laughs> Um, you know, it's funny. When I was in eighth grade, my English teacher gave me the nickname of Squeaks because my voice was so much higher than everybody else's. <laughs> And it caught on, and it was like, it was a time when like, you, do, do you guys know dog tags? You could get them engraved with stuff. I had a purple one, it had it engraved with squeaks on it, and I would wear it everywhere. <laughs> I don't know where, it, it might be like in my mom's attic or something, but I don't know. We gotta get you a new one. That's funny, right? <clears throat> Were we rhinestone emporium? Yes. Because we could bedazzle it. Yeah. Yes, I love it. <laughs> um, so, I don't know, I, I kind of like went with it. I liked having that nickname, clearly I wore that everywhere, but I was also kind of like, uh, I do have a pretty unique voice, and I was already acting. I was doing a lot of community theater, and I was doing dance, and I was doing commercials in New York, and um, it just kind of like snowballed into me only doing voiceovers. Like, as an actor, like you'll notice a lot of actors are like really known for one genre. I mean, sure, there are exceptions, but like, there are really amazing like Broadway actors, there are amazing TV actors, there are amazing film actors. Like I just happened to like as I grew as an actor, like voiceovers kind of emerged as the thing that I was really, really good at. So even though I was doing all sorts of acting, like voiceovers was always the thing that I would work on the most. And that's why I like to say it chose me. <laughs> yeah. It's a good story. Another reason why I have a girl crush on you today. <laughs> Um, so for me, I, I kind of, I mean, not the same story, but 
I had an instance where I was, I was going to school at Michigan State and I was studying to be a producer um, uh, behind the scenes. And I was working for Michigan Public Broadcasting and I was also working at a talent agency, booking talent. And the guy that, uh, that owned the agency sent me up on a commercial audition. He's like, why don't you go read for this radio spot? And I was like, no, I really don't want to do that. I'm you know, behind the scenes. He's like, just go, just go, you can be perfect. So I go to, to read, I do the audition, and like a week later I'm in the car with my roommate and I hear the spot on the radio. In the car, my, my friend's like, hey, isn't that you? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I think that is me. So they had actually just taken my audition and mixed it and put it on the radio without booking me. So that was kind of the beginning of it where I sort of realized, hey, you know, I think I could do this. This is kind of fun. So then I sort of didn't do anything else with it there. I, I graduated and went on to be a producer for uh, Michigan Public Broadcasting. Then I went to Chicago and I started doing improv and theater and I just kind of, that whole thing with like the stage and the theater and you know stuff, I don't know, opportunities just kept coming up for voiceover. It was like, hey, do you wanna do that? Hey, do you wanna do this? And sometimes when it's like you have an opportunity that's, that's like being handed to you, you go, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, and then it just kind of snowballed from there, you know, in Chicago and then in LA. You know, I was doing on camera in LA, but I hated it. I hated the auditioning process. It's not fun at all. And, it, and the same sort of thing happened with voiceover. It just kind of, like, um, yeah. Like Cassandra said, it just sort of happened where voiceover became like the, you know, the mainstay of my acting career. Uh, I got into voiceover uh, because I wanted to act when I was a kid and I got into acting when I was six and my ultimate life goal was to be on Barney. Uh, so Barney was the reason that I became an actor and by default became a voice actor because at seven, um, I had uh, the voiceover agent for the adult department of the big agency that I was with called me in and like, this is like how long ago it was, they had a closet for their booth and they recorded it on a tape player and then they would FedEx the tapes to the audition, and to, the, to the studio, so that was our audition. And uh, uh, she said, Jeremy has a really cute voice and 7-Eleven wants to have a three-year-old daughter that they're gonna animate walking through this magical world with like how Slurpees are made or how pretzels are made or donuts are made and I would have to narrate this whole thing but three-year-olds couldn't use all of the big vocabulary needed, so they got a seven-year-old who could read really well, who sounded like a child. Um, and then from there, I was doing voiceover commercials every week because the studios would say, well, we know her, she was in last week and we have this kid, and so I was just leaving school uh, during lunch and I would record voiceover commercials. And I got into anime voice acting after I graduated from high school and had an audition at Funimation and they just, kept letting me stick around. But uh, I've been acting since I was a kid. I do a little bit of everything. Um, and I, I love it. And I think, uh, I love everything about the business. And I've worked as a casting assistant so I could see what that's like. I've worked on the production side. I've worked at a talent agency uh, just because I cannot get enough of this business. And it's, not, it, it's a tough business, but I love it so much that I tolerate all of the not so fun parts because they're there are some fun parts, and one of the most fun parts is getting to hang out with you guys. So that's a bonus that I did not know was a thing when I became an actor, so that's cool. Um, I grew up around uh, voice acting. Both my mom and dad were voice actors. Um, the first time I got in the booth, uh, I was eight. My dad was working on Power Rangers. Um, he was Rito Revolto, the skeleton dude on Power Rangers. Uh, yeah, and a bunch of the monsters. And uh, at the end of his session, the director was like, we need a kid's voice. And my dad's like, he's a kid, throw him in the booth. <laughs> I jumped in the booth and became a Oh my god, actor. you just sounded exactly like your dad. <laughs> my, so my dad had the exact opposite voice as me. Uh, he's like big and burly and did all these giant monsters. And my voice hasn't changed since middle school. <laughs> so it's not gonna happen. I think if I started smoking and drinking whiskey now, I would still never sound like it. <laughs> that was a great imitation though. <laughs> um, 
So, I never thought I would be a, a professional voice actor. I always kind of just did it for fun. Um, I used to prank call girls in middle school as their friends and get away with it. Um, so I knew I liked making voices. Um, it wasn't until after, uh, like right as I was graduating college, uh, I thought I was gonna be an attorney. I went to UCLA and studied political science and philosophy. Yeah, UCLA, bro! Um, and uh, I thought I was gonna go to law school and then I booked a job and then I booked another one and booked another one and I thought, well, law school can wait. I'll make funny voices in a booth. And I haven't looked back. Thank you. My question is for Austin and Chase. So, on either way, who do you think will win in the battle between you guys and Lucy and Oh. In a game or real life? Just equal playing game, real life. So, Kitty Toe can't cheat? No, oh, he's cheating. He's gonna win. <laughs> Dual wielding skills, but no, no cheat. Well, Austin, you take Lucy. Go ahead. You talk about how that's gonna go. So what you're asking me to do is choose two of the characters that live within my head. One has a sword. One has a lot of keys, and some of those keys are a little emotionally or mentally unstable. And you want all of that fighting going on up here. You want me in an insane asylum, is what you're telling me. I wouldn't be able to come to these anymore without a straitjacket and padded walls. Um, I don't know, that's so hard. Um, there's so many different things that could occur that would just affect things. If, if Natsu had broken into Lucy's house and she was frustrated by that, that would affect the battle and then obviously Asuna and Kirito would win. If Kirito and Asuna were having an argument because Kirito is making some questionable choices, then Lucy and Natsu would win. It's just like you don't know on the day all of the extenuating Right, well, but then, then they would win because I'm down a player. Yes. And then, then I feel bad about it. It's just, you know. But yeah, you talk about how things would go with Natsu, and I'll call Todd while you're. Okay. Dominate. Just destroyed him right away. No contest. I'm Kate, and I'll text it to Oh, fantastic. <laughs> no, I think it is really tough to beat Kirito um, because he's, he's leveled so high um, that any attacks wouldn't even make his life bar go down at all. <clears throat> yes. Love the cosplay. Looks yeah. great. Thank you. You broke my heart. Oh, and Yui's heart. heart. Yeah. Yep. Aww. 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 Yui and yeah, my girlfriend. She's a big fan. She would probably be nerding out. <laughs> <laughs> I got two short questions. Um, my first question is from Michelle. Um, how would you react if a uh, crazy Shinkawa broke out of prison? Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. uh, um, how would I react if he broke out of prison? Yeah, like in your character. Oh, my God. I would have to talk about an insane asylum. Um, well, maybe I would be ready for him the second time around. Yeah. I'm going to say that I would be ready for him because at that point in, in the story, Sinan has overcome her fear of guns. And I would say that he better watch himself if he decides to come back after me. You've also got a lot of friends, and we would all come to take you down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. That my, my sister wives got my back. And that guy over there. With all of us, you know, he could just show up at the end. We would take care of him. And then take the credit. That's, that's the way of course. you roll. <laughs> My other question is, and this is for everyone, all of you guys, 
Are you guys going to get together and go see the movie? Yes. That would be fun. I would like to. I believe there's a premiere yeah. of the movie happening in Los Angeles on March 1st. Yeah. So I think we've all been invited to that. So it's very possible that we'll all make it and see it together. Yeah. Thank you, you're awesome. Thank you, you are awesome. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Um, so you guys obviously have been to a lot of cons, and you guys always, you guys always get the question, what's your craziest story? But uh, inverse of that, what's like a nice story you guys have had at a con, like interaction with a fan or something? Just one, not like that. I'm always like super touched when somebody comes up and says, you know, your the story and your performance got me through a hard time. Like I just that to me is like the icing on the cake because I don't I I can't speak for everybody, but I know when I first started doing voiceover, I wasn't really thinking about the effect that it would have on that out, you know, like that ripple effect that it has. And to have somebody say that to you and know that your what you're doing really means something, you know, and, and it's making a positive effect on somebody is really great. Yeah. Um, to know that, I mean, pretty much every interaction that I have with a fan is awesome. Like, it's amazing. Like I never, like like Michelle was saying, I never thought like being a voice actor that I would have fans and people that like recognize my voice and like watch my work and like have intelligent cool things to say about it so that is in and of itself mind-blowing um a really funny story though that i will share because it happened yesterday and like over the summer some uh, so it's a huge sao panel at anime expo in los angeles someone brought a giant bryce head yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Bryce face that they printed out and like it was huge. So yesterday. No, no, this is what she's about to talk Yes. So yesterday, Alex Von David, who is the director for SAO, he doesn't even like make convention appearances really. I did, yeah, yeah. Can we do it again? Yes, we can. So yesterday, an Alex Von David head shows up in my honor line and it was so awesome. He's right over there. <laughs> so it's like, I love that like people are now printing out faces of voice actors and just like putting them on sticks and like carrying them around. It's freaking awesome. Hey, will, will you come up here really fast so we can do something? Yes, sir. Yay! <laughs> so we're just gonna put Alex in the middle and we're all gonna okay, donate our picture. Tag him on the Twitter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have his Twitter handle. Thank you. Ten more minutes. We only have ten more minutes. Oh, to up, guys. We'll answer fun as killer. As as we okay, what's your favorite? Um, I mean, all of these events are so cool. When when you're voice acting, you're in a booth by yourself, and if you deliver a line that's funny or that's emotional, you just hear, "Good job, moving on." And <laughs> this is like a voice actor's applause. Yeah. When, when you have people show up and, and talk about the roles that you've done, it's, it's so cool. Um, so that's why voice actors love doing these shows. There's so many, and there's a couple that come to mind. Uh, I think it's just, uh, 
mind blowing. Each time we do like a big event where we get to premiere the show and watch that with people is really exciting. Getting to go around the world, which I never thought would be a thing, and find out that there are fans all over the world that love the shows and that it's a universal thing, that's very cool. Um, but I had one, I, when I got cast as Sailor Venus and Sailor Moon, um, we had to keep it very, very top secret, couldn't say anything. And there was um, a woman who had heard that I loved Sailor Moon, it was the first anime that I watched. And she was standing in line to get fairy tale stuff signed, but her daughter was like four or five, and she was dressed as Sailor Venus. I knew I had been cast, but I knew I could not announce it for another like four months. And she had the uh, Sailor Venus, um, she had like her little hair bow and her little Venus doll, and she was dressed. And I was like, you look so cute, can I have a picture with you? And the little girl was like, uh, I hope you get to be Venus, you're my favorite. Will you sign this? And I was like, I don't know if I could sign this. And her mom said, we've been watching the 90s uh, version, um, but I heard they're getting another one. And I'm so excited because now I get to relive my childhood through the eyes of my daughter. Nice. And uh, so that was just so cool to see how anime like lives on and me getting to watch that version and having that with her and then getting to sign this autograph for this little girl and take a picture and not to say anything, but her mom texted me. So I've told the story a couple times. She tweeted me the picture and she was like, we know, we're the first ones, if we remember. And I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. That's awesome. um, and then yesterday, you giving the speech at the panel about why we do what we do in, for confessionals. Um, I've been like a horrible person all weekend because of my character. Uh, but Bryce got to give this great speech that I think is pretty representative of all of us voice actors and how we feel, and getting to deliver that to fans. Yeah. Bryce did an incredible job, and at one point I got very, very teary-eyed, because I'm like, he's getting to deliver this to fans, this is absolutely how we all feel, and that was definitely one of my favorite moments as well. I thought that was really cool. Thank you guys, all. Thank you. over the world. Yeah. yeah, he's asking what we would all do if we became Jedi. <laughs> I, I think in, in Gun Gale, Kirito essentially becomes a Jedi. Oh, yeah. and, I mean, I wanted two things for that arc. Personally, I wanted him to have a lightsaber, photon sword, um, and I wanted him to cut a bullet in half with it. And he did. <laughs> Indeed you did. I just, uh, I can't really say the exact project, but I just did a thing for a VR, and I'm really curious to see what it's going to be like. Um, they're expensive. I mean, I think you can buy, like, the cheaper versions, but really nice, like, VR glasses are fun. Um, I, I put on, it's called, like, Oculus Prime. Yeah, so I put that on one day while I w we were, like, on lunch, like, we were on lunch in the middle of recording a video game and someone had an Oculus Prime and I put it on and everyone had already tried it. Everyone who was there and I was like the nerd, like uncool person who hadn't tried it yet. So like I put it on and I was literally like, like <laughs> <laughs> And by the time I took it off, everyone had left the lunchroom and was like back in, <laughs> in the studio and I was like, oh my God. But it was mind blowing. It was crazy. Um, and it's just going to keep getting more and more advanced. So, yeah. I tried the Oculus at, uh, at a convention. And uh, it was this game where 
you have to dodge bullets. It's like stick figures, and they're shooting at you, and like, if you stop, time slows down, and you just see the bullet coming at you Whoa. really slowly, and you have to like, physically move out of the way. It was crazy. I wanna play. Have you ever tried VR? No, I've only, I, I only had somebody, uh, it was a Japanese, um, he, he was a creator of, a, I guess, like an online animated series, and he also has a coffee shop that matches his series in Hawaii, and it matches the animation, and the, the, the waiters all have these dress Oh, that's It's cool. super cool. But he had this whole animated world, and so I looked around, and I saw it, but I haven't done anything like what you guys are doing. But that was really cool. That's cool. Thank you. Thank you. Starburst. <laughs> I like that nobody wants a Fruit Loop. I could give out a handful of Fruit Loops. Some oh, okay. Ones. Oh, oh crap. Okay. Oh, she's gonna lick them first before yeah. she gives them to them. All the hands are like going down except one person's like, I just don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think for me, the biggest challenge wasn't uh, mixing Kirito and Tiz, it was mixing Kirito and Reno Kumura from Blue Exorcist. Um, I recorded Blue Exorcist, and then right after we finished, I was cast as Kirito in Sword Art, and uh, it's the same team, the same director, the same producer, so the comment I kept getting while I was in the booth was, Rin, get out of the booth. <laughs> you're not Rin, you're Kirito. I think Rino Kumura is closer to my speaking voice, and Kirito has this sort of hazy feel to it, and I, I don't know, so I kept sliding back into Rin, and I'd have to constantly push him out of the booth. Um, so, I mean, I definitely do like alter my voice for my different characters. There are a lot of characters that I think is like my normal speaking voice, but then afterwards I'll listen to it and it's not, I don't know, it's, it's strange. But I think the thing that differentiates like Lipa and Adia is their personalities. Like Lipa wouldn't say a line the same way Adia would. Like Adia is way more sassy. Um, <laughs> Lipa, I mean Lipa's tough, but in a different way. She's more emotional, so. I mean, I instead of like doing a voice, I kind of think of it as like doing a character, like doing a personality, and I, then that just comes across with like the vocal delivery. No. <laughs> Deadpool's in Alpine Online? Does he have wings? <laughs> I love Deadpool. I love Deadpool, yeah. I'd let him, I'd, he can do I whatever he wants. <laughs> okay. So I would say, sure, I'll help you hunt down Deadpool, just so I could get close to Deadpool and switch sides. <laughs> to be on Deadpool's side to hunt down so that. you could get close to him and say, you're being hunted down, run! Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we finish these two yes, questions? Yes. Awesome, thank you. Alright, so I was going to try to ask a dumb and wrong question. Shout out to the Duco and Shopping. Ooh, yeah. But a thought just occurred to me right now. I asked Bryce and Terry about this in summer 2013, but I'm not sure Cassandra or oh. Michelle know about it. Yes. Chapter 16.5. Oh. Oh. I don't understand. Chapter 16.5? Don't, don't do it. Don't do it? Don't do it. Do you know about it? <laughs> right now? Alright, now we have a
have a homework assignment yeah, as well. You guys Google that and then we'll take the next question yeah. and we'll watch how they respond. I'm really excited about that. Oh my god. I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm kidding. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 As Nagy? Yes. I'm trying to think of what Nagy would say to Juco. I don't think he would care. <laughs> I'm just gonna do what Nike always says. Juco, you got that wrong! <laughs> no? No. <laughs> no? No. Yeah, yeah, wrong. <laughs> that was just so silly, but my real question was, can you guys, like you personally, if you were, or if you could be anyone in an RPG, what would you be and why? But in any RPG, it doesn't have to be a sales. It can just be anything. Like it can be any character in any RPG? Yeah, any like, World of Warcraft, anything. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking it in my head. I was like, well, Bryce, choose wisely. This, this question was asked uh, on another panel, and we had to choose our character type. And I'm playing uh, a game that I work on. It's a mobile game called Mobius Final Fantasy. And there's a ton of character types, but I just happen to be a dancer right now. And somehow that got turned into pole dancer, and that's what she drew. <laughs> so I am a pole dancer in an RPG. And uh, my response to that question uh, was that I wanted to be a mage or a healer. I didn't know which, but I feel like if you're magical, you could also heal. But then someone's like, well, why don't you be a magical girl? And I like glitter and sparkles and dresses, so I wanted to be a mage healer magical girl. So you'd be okay with turning into a witch afterwards? I'm totally okay with turning into a witch afterwards. That sounds awesome. You guys are getting much further than we Fifty Shades of SAO? What is this? <laughs> Look, so they brought that up to us in that summer panel. And Bryce and I were like, we're not an 18 plus panel. We did not discuss chapter 16.5. So I read like the first sentence, uh, not aloud. And I was like, we cannot. Because Bryce was like, yeah, we'll read it. And we have, and so then I read the first sentence. I was like, we can't read this. And then he was like, he was like, well, maybe there's a way we can like, you know, water it down. And because everyone's like, please do a live reading in 18 up panel. So I read the whole thing to try to water it down. No. <laughs> There's no. no watering that down. There's, I don't know who wrote like, that, but that's like... Furthermore, oh, further, right yeah, furthermore, like, what is there to read? There's no, there's no lines. <laughs> there are no words. <laughs> Just sounds. Only sounds, correct. <laughs> I mean, come on now. But now you guys know, and I feel better about this panel, knowing that we that you're not okay. alone. Uh huh? Now you have to read the Have whole you thing. you rebuilt your Starburst village that Michelle destroyed yet? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'll say I'm sorry. What do I, I'm sorry. If you could be any character in any RPG, what would you be? Like, World of Warcraft, SAO, Alpine, any, anything. Can I just be Lika because I love her? <laughs> I love my Sinon, too. She's pretty badass. Yeah. I'd follow her into battle anywhere, pretty much. <laughs> so, so really quick before we say goodbye, where can everyone find you guys the rest of the convention? Oh, um, I have autographs at 12.30 today. Tomorrow I have autographs, and I also have a women in voice acting panel in the afternoon. I'm not sure what time. Two o'clock-ish, so if you want to see us again, come I have an autograph session, a VIP autograph session at 1, and then a free autograph session at 4.30 today, um, and then another autograph session tomorrow morning. Check your schedules. It's either 10 or 11, and then I'll be doing the women in... Um, is it women in anime or women in voiceover panel? Whatever it is. So women. With this lady. Yeah, and, and you can find me at Michelle Ruff V01 on Twitter um, and uh, Michelle Ruff voiceover on uh, Facebook. Hell yeah! Hell to the yeah!
Um, yeah, so this weekend I will also be on the uh, Women in Voice Acting panel. I'll be doing autographs later today, like right after this, I think. Uh, I will be filming confessionals around. Uh, we are actually doing a big scene that you guys can be in. It will be on you guys on Sunday after closing ceremonies. I believe we'll be in this room, actually. Uh, so if you want to come, we will be filming you. You'll be in the series, all that fun stuff. Uh, and, uh, oh, I just got informed like five seconds ago that the confessionals cast will be doing autographs in the exhibitor hall from 12.30 to 1.30. Uh, you can get your Team Bad and Flock t-shirts. I'm not even going to announce Team Malcolm because if any of you are on Team Malcolm, we need to have conversation. Oh, oh, it's just your, okay. Then you tell it if you're telling okay. me wrong. Okay, so 12.30 1.30 in the Exhibitors Hall, you will have the chance to purchase a Team Babin Flock or Team Malcolm t-shirt for confessionals or a poster. Um, so I will be down there in the Exhibitors Hall for that hour if you are interested. Um, I, I have autographs right after this as well, and tomorrow I'm in the Men of Voice Acting, uh, which I like to call the Maname Panel. <laughs> Uh, so watch watch Twitter and Facebook for times and such. Thanks guys. This Thank was you fun. guys so much for coming.